Charlie's black and white cat Early in the morning Just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock ring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy Boom, 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 boom. What a lovely day, said Pat to Jess as they drove along the valley on a fine sunny morning. They came into the village and stopped at the post office as they did every day to collect the letters. Good morning, Pat called. Morning, Pat, said Mrs. Goggins. Looks like a busy day for you. Lots of letters and parcels. <laughs> well, at least it's a nice day for it. That's odd, said Mrs. Goggins. Most of the post seems to be for Katie and Tom Pottage. Ah, but of course it's their birthday. Oh, so it is, said Pat. Won't they be excited when they see all these parcels? They are lucky. I remember when I was their age, waiting for the post. Hey, I'd better be on my way. <laughs> They'll be looking out for me. Well, I'll be off. Goodbye. Boom, 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 boom. Pat was on his way. Before going to the Pottages, he had to call at the village school. Some of the children had arrived early and were playing in the schoolyard. Bill Thompson came running up to take care of the letters till the headmaster came. He always did that because he was the oldest. Oh dear! Right in a puddle. Sarah and Lucy Selby asked Pat if he was good at hopscotch because they'd just had new lines painted in the yard. Well, it's a long time since I played, said Pat, but I'll have a go. Let's see now. He was quite good at it. Whoops! Pat was enjoying the hopscotch so much he almost forgot the time. Hey, I'll have to be going. We can't have the post being late, can we? <laughs> Especially today. Bye-bye, Pat. Goodbye. turned in at Greendale Farm. Katie and Tom saw him coming and ran to meet him. They were so excited they couldn't wait to see what Pat had brought them. They're twins, you see, so it was a double birthday. Pat wished them a happy birthday, then took a letter to their mother.
Tom's present was just what he wanted. But Katie didn't seem very pleased with hers. What's up with Katie? asked Pat. Mm, she's wrong side out today, said Mrs. Pottage. She's lost Sarah Ann. Sarah Ann? Is, is that the little doll she takes to school? She takes it everywhere. She's lost without it. I don't know what we'll do if it doesn't turn up. Oh, it's sure to turn up somewhere. Trouble is, it could be anywhere. We went to see Aunt Alice yesterday and called at lots of places. She could have left it anywhere. Don't worry, I'll look for Sarah Ann, said Pat. I might come across her. I'm good at finding things, you know. <laughs> we'll get her smiling again. You'll see. Cheerio. Come on, Jess. We've work to do. The next stop was the church. The Reverend Timms heard Pat's van coming. There was a card from Cousin Joan on holiday in Majorca. Pat told him about Katie's lost doll. Oh, she could have lost it in the church, said Reverend Timms. She always brings it. Oh well, seek and thou shalt find. Let's have a look. Mind your head. Found anything? Called Pat. Oh, yes, a bump on the head. At last, the Reverend Timms did find something, but it wasn't Sarah Ann. It was a lady's glove. It had the letters DT sewn inside. DT, said Pat. Dorothy Thompson, that's whose it is, I'm sure. I'll take it along for her. She will be pleased. Well, I hope Katie's doll turns up somewhere said the Reverend Timms. We'll just keep on looking till it does, said Pat. Thanks for helping. Cheerio. When Pat and Jess arrived at Thompson Ground, Mrs. Thompson was out with a basket, collecting the eggs. She was surprised when Pat gave her a glove with her letters. Well, I never, she said. Where did you find this? I've been looking everywhere for it. Then Pat told her about Katie's doll. I was looking in the church for it. The Reverend Tim's found your glove instead. Now let me see. Katie and the mother came to tea yesterday. She could have left her doll under a cushion. We'd better have a look. They searched everywhere. Mrs. Thompson found something, but it wasn't a doll. It was a penknife. Hey, that looks like Ted Glenn's knife. Goodness knows when he left it here, said Mrs. Thompson. Would you take it along for him? He will be pleased to have it back. Yes, I'll take it. I do hope you find Katie's doll. We'll keep looking. See you tomorrow. Cheerio. Bye-bye, Pat. What a day, said Pat to Jess. We found a glove and a penknife 
but no Sarah Ann. I wonder if there's any chance of finding her at Ted Glenn's. Ted Glenn was delighted to see his knife. He couldn't guess where Pat had found it. When Pat told him about Katie's lost doll, Ted said, hey, She was here yesterday with her mother. Uh, they brought a lamp to repair. So they went to look in Ted's workshop. find the doll, but Ted found a watch that he'd forgotten he had. <laughs> Enjoying yourself, Pat. That's Miss Hubbard's, he said. She brought it to be mended ages ago. She must have forgotten all about it. Would you take it for a Pat? Certainly. I'm going that way. I hope you find the lassie's doll, said Ted. So do I, said Pat. I seem to be able to find everything else. Bye, Ted. So long, then. Miss Hubbard was shopping at Sam's mobile shop whilst Sam was enjoying a cup of tea. Miss Hubbard was surprised to see Pat. And even more surprised to see her watch. Pat told them all about Katie's lost doll, but they hadn't seen it. Poor Katie, said Pat, and on her birthday too. I know. I'll take her a box of chocolates. <laughs> That'll cheer her up. Aha! Sarah Ann. So that's where you've been hiding all this time. It's Katie's doll, said Pat. I found her when I wasn't looking for her. Sitting behind the chocolates. Sam was amazed. That child gets everywhere. I'll take the chocolates anyway, said Pat. They'll make a nice birthday present. Cheerio! Here she is, Jess. Keep an eye on her. When Pat arrived at the twins' party with Sarah Ann and the chocolates, Katie gave a big smile, the first that day. Jess joined in the party. And Pat had a piece of cake. <coughs> Delicious, said Pat. But it's time we were off. Bye-bye, <laughs> Pat. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good time. One sunny morning, Pat was hurrying along the road with a van full of letters and parcels for the people of Greendale. Suddenly, he had to stop. <laughs> it was Alf Thompson driving his sheep across the road.
Don't worry, Jess. They won't eat you. The sheep went into a field. And Pat was on his way again. His next stop was at the village school. Where is everybody? The children were bringing things to school for a display. Charlie Pringle had a bunch of flowers. Lucy Selby had brought a basket of eggs. My, your hens have been busy. And Tom Pottage had some day old chicks. Hey, mind how you go. Whilst looking at all these things, Pat had forgotten his letters. But Bill Thompson came along with a cup of tea. Thank you, said Pat. And Bill took the letters. Sarah Gilbertson came for his cup. Have you done? She said. Nearly. Thanks, Sarah. That was grand. Goodbye. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat was getting on well with his round. He locked his van and as it was a nice day for a picnic, he took his sandwiches to a field on the hill above Thompson Ground. E, it's been an easy day today. It was so warm that Pat soon fell asleep. But Mrs. Thompson's hens were wide awake and Pat had left his sandwich box open with his keys neatly beside it.
The noise woke Pat, just in time to chase after his sandwiches. And then he turned round in time to see a cheeky hen stealing his keys. I must get my keys back. I can't open the van or deliver my letters without them. Oh, so that's where you've got to. Oh dear, it's a long time since I climbed a tree. But here goes. was just reaching out when the hen dropped the keys and flew off. Now the keys were stuck in the tree, and as Pat was climbing towards them, the branch gave way and... Oh! Right in the middle of a prickly bush. Ouch! Mrs. Thompson had heard the commotion and came to see what was going on. Pat told her about the thieving hen. Deary me, said Mrs. Thompson, the little devil. She must think she's a magpie or some such. We'd better get a ladder and see if we can reach your keys. There'll be no more post today unless we can, said Pat. That won't do, said Mrs. Thompson, especially when I'm expecting a letter from Auntie Jean to say whether she's coming for Easter or not. So they went for the ladder. I'll take it now. They're here, all right. Look, I've got them. There's something else up here. Lots of things. It's like a magpie's nest. My. He brought everything down to show Mrs. Thompson. There were all kinds of shiny things. There's my wedding ring that went missing last Easter. I thought I'd lost it down the sink. <sighs> That's all right. Uh, I'll get it down. Mind your head. My hens have stolen your sandwiches. You'd better come and have some dinner with me. There's plenty to spare. That's very nice of you. Pat was glad he lost his sandwiches when he saw what a good dinner Mrs. Thompson had cooked. Mrs. Thompson was glad, too. She'd got her ring back. But it was soon time to be off. Thanks for the meal. It was lovely. Come on, Jess. Jess. Come on. Just fancy, said Pat. A magpie hen. <laughs> Who ever heard of such a thing? Pat 
stopped to tell Sam Waldron about the magpie hen. It had better keep away from my van, he said. I wonder if that's where my tie pin went. Hmm, sounds odd. Oh, it just needs a clean. When Pat saw Miss Hubbard, he told her about the magpie hen. Well, I lost a silver earring last month, she said. And a hat pin. I wonder if they're up a tree somewhere. I must go and see Mrs. Thompson. On the way home, Pat met Alf Thompson on his tractor and stopped to tell him about the magpie hen. Alf couldn't think of anything he lost, but he thought it was a good story. Pat had a letter for him. Ooh, one for me. I'll not lose this anyway. Cheerio. Bye. Pat saw some real magpies on the way home and wondered if they had taught Mrs. Thompson's hens to steal. As for Jess, he was asleep. It was a special day for Pat, but he was keeping it a secret. Now then, Jess, don't you give my secret away. Mrs. Goggins was looking out for Pat. She was very pleased about something. Hello, Pat, she said. There's a lot of post today. Pat didn't look too happy until he saw that most of it was for him. But who could be writing to Pat? One envelope had a drawing of a cat on it and the writing looked very much like Katie Pottage's. Why don't you open them? Then you'll know who sent them. So Pat did. What a surprise. They were all birthday cards. He stood them in a row along the counter. There was one from every person on his round. That was nice. But how did everyone know it was his birthday today? He'd kept it a secret all these years, and now they all knew. Funny. How on earth they found out, I couldn't say. But let me wish you a happy birthday too, and many happy returns. Pat bought six chocolate kittens. Then gathered up all his cards and letters and went on his way. Greendale Farm, the twins were looking out for Pat. Happy birthday, Pat, they said as he came in with the post. Mm, thank you. Mrs. Pottage had just come in from the kitchen. Happy birthday, 
she said. Pat showed the twins his cards. We've made you a cake. How did you know it was my birthday? said Pat. We're not telling, said Mrs. Pottage. It's a secret. <laughs> it was a secret, said Pat with a laugh. Here's a sugar mouse for Jess, said Tom. Thank you very much. Now let me see. Have I got everything? Cake, mouse, cards... Goodbye. Jess spotted the mouse. He thought he'd catch it before it got lost. No, said Pat. Save it for tea time. It won't run away. But Jess wasn't so sure. Hello, Reverend. A letter for you. Oh, thank you. Mm, been expecting this. And here's something for you to greet you on your birthday. Thank you, said Pat. It was a leather-bound Bible. Oh, thank you. But how did you know? He who reads shall learn. Very kind of you. Goodbye. Godspeed. There were some letters for Thompson Ground. Come in. Pat arrived just in time for a cup of tea. Thank you. Oh, your letter. Alf Thompson came in. Hello, Pat, he said. Happy birthday. He gave him a walking stick with a handle made from a sheep's horn. He'd made it himself. That'll be good for keeping dogs off. Thanks, said Pat. But how did you know it was my birthday? Oh, you'll have to find that out for yourself. Just keep your eyes open, said Alf, smiling. You're quite a famous postman, you know. Whatever does he mean, thought Pat. He was getting more and more puzzled, and his van was filling up with presents. <laughs> Jess didn't like the stick. He thought the horn might butt him when he wasn't looking. Granny Dryden was busy cooking when Pat arrived with the letters. He'd brought her groceries too, as the mobile shop couldn't get up the lane to her cottage. Morning! Post! Granny Dryden had knitted something for Pat's birthday. Whatever was it? A woolly vest. 
It'll keep you warm in the winter, said Granny Dryden. <laughs> it looked very itchy. But Pat said, Thank you, it's, it's just the right size. How did you know it was my birthday? Eh? I can't hear a word you say, said Granny Dryden. I need a new battery in my hearing aid. Uh, I'll bring you one tomorrow, said Pat. Goodbye. <laughs> At Miss Hubbard's cottage, there was a glass of fruit juice waiting for Pat. There were two letters for her. Miss Hubbard drank his health and wished him a happy birthday. Cheers! She gave him a steering wheel cover made of red velvet. Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> she didn't tell him how she knew it was his birthday. Goodbye! At Intake Farm, George Lancaster showed Pat his special prize hens. They look champion, said Pat. They are, they're champion layers, said George. Just look at that. He gave him two dozen for his birthday and a dozen for the village school. Thanks for the eggs, George. Then Sam Waldron arrived and gave Pat a punnet of strawberries and a carton of double cream for his birthday tea. Thank you, Sam. Lucy was on the lookout for Pat at the village school. The children had made a picture of him on a big sheet of card with Happy Birthday written underneath and all their names. They'd also made a model of his van, but they wouldn't tell him how they knew it was his birthday. Pat had presents for them, a chocolate kitten each, and the eggs from George Lancaster. Goodbye. The day's round was nearly finished. Pat was just looking to see if there were any letters to collect when Peter Fogg came along on his tractor. He stopped to wish Pat a happy birthday. Pat told him how everyone seemed to know about it. <laughs> Don't you know why? said Peter Fogg laughing. I wish I did, said Pat. Peter showed him a newspaper. It was this week's Pencaster Gazette. Have a look at this, he said. Pat was amazed. There was an article about him, headed Postman of the Year. It told all about his work, how he helped everyone, where he was born, and the date of his birthday. Well, said Pat. How did they find all that out? Keep it as a souvenir, said Peter. Thanks, said Pat. I'll show it to the wife. <laughs> she will be pleased. All right, Jess, I'm coming. I know it's been a long day, but we're off home now.
It's a pity no one knows when it's your birthday, Jess. Never mind. We'll have a little party tonight. Nasty day, said Pat. Jess looked out at the rain. He hated wet days. What a day. Wet letters, wet everything. It was still raining when Pat reached the village post office. What dreadful weather. Just look at these letters. Imagine them getting so wet just being posted. It's like a wet wash day. <laughs> I see what you mean. Never mind, they'll soon dry. You'd best watch out for floods up the valley. There's more rain forecast, you know. Mm, don't you worry, Mrs Goggins. The post will get through. Oh, it stopped raining. Cheerio. Pat was on his way. What a dismal day it was. Some people still had lights on indoors. What had happened to Peter Fogg? Pat stopped to find out. It's this blooming rain. My old tractor's bogged down in the bottom meadow. It's our flooded down there. Then I went and fell in the mud. <laughs> you look as if you've had a bath in it. I just about have. I'm off home for some dry clothes, then I'll get the new tractor to pull the old one out. Good luck, said Pat. I think it's fairing up now. Cheerio. When Pat arrived at the school, some of the children were looking out to see if the rain had stopped. He was surprised to see Charlie Pringle running out for the letters instead of Bill Thompson. Hello, Charlie. Where's Bill, then? He's off school today. They say there's flooding up at Thompson Ground. He'll be helping his dad get the sheep in. Well, don't drop the letters. They've already had one wetting. It's nice to see someone enjoying the rain, thought Pat. Whoops! Hey, watch it. Cheerio! Greendale Farm, he saw Peter Fogg again. He'd changed his clothes. Here, Pat! Come and have a look at this. He showed Pat his new tractor with its bulldozer blade. This'll shift anything, he said. Bet it would, said Pat. Oh, here's your mail. 
Utah. Bye. The Reverend Tim's was having trouble with the rain too. said the Reverend. The rain rains on the just and the unjust. Look out! I'll ask Ted Glenn to bring his ladders and have a look at that roof, said Pat. Bye. Farewell, Pat. Sam Walden was just along the road. Take it steady, Pat, said Sam. The roads are flooding up the valley. <laughs> the old van will get me through, said Pat. I'll just take a bunch of bananas. The wife loves them. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Jess was glad to stay in the van to keep out of the wet. They were getting into the hills when they saw Mrs. Thompson standing in the road, waving to make them stop. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. What's going on? said Pat. There are terrible floods in the top fields, Pat. And the water's brought tons of earth down and blocked the road. Come and see. Oh, dear me, said Pat. Can't we telephone the village for help? No, the lines are down. Well, can't we walk round it? No, oh, it's too dangerous with these floods. And you could be buried if the land started to slip again. Here comes Alf. He's going to try to get through with his tractor. Do you think you can do it? said Pat. Oh, I'll have a jolly good try. Off he went at top speed. And got stuck. It's no good, said Alf. We'll have to get help somehow. Then Bill came with his model aeroplane. I know, he said. We can put a message on my plane and I can fly it across to Greendale Farm to get help. It's radio controlled, see? What a good idea. Clever lad. We'll send an airmail letter. So Pat scribbled a note. S-O-S. That'll do it.
He tied it to the plane with a bit of Alf's binder twine. Good luck. Let's hope it gets through. Oh, I think he'll manage it. He's a clever lad. He built it himself, you know. Bill started the engine. And off it flew. Away she goes. That's better than a van. <laughs> I wonder if I could swap mine for a helicopter. It seemed ages since the plane had gone. Pat was just thinking it must have crashed when he heard a powerful engine coming up the road on the other side of the blockage. It was Peter Fogg on his new tractor with the bulldozer blade. Got your message! Mind your back! Oh, oh. waved Sam Waldron through. There was just enough room. <laughs> Ted Glenn was mending a wall for Mr. Pottage. Pat had remembered something. Can you go and have a look at the church roof, Ted? The Reverend's got the church full of buckets. <laughs> I'll pop along when I've finished this wall. Blooming rain. It makes no end of work. Miss Hubbard was on her way to choir practice. I'd turn back if I were you, said Pat. <laughs> well, you might have to swim home. Swim? said Miss Hubbard. It'll take more than a drop of rain to stop me. And on she went. I'll be on my way too, said Pat. Cheerio. As Pat wound his way along the valley, it looked like rain again but there was a warm fireside to look forward to <laughs> when all the letters had been delivered. It was a cloudy morning in Greendale, but as Pat set out along the valley on his way to the village post office, it brightened up. A large van was parked in the narrow road. It was Sam's mobile shop. It was going to be a tight squeeze getting past. Come on, straighten up. Come on, you could get a bus through there. Plenty of room. Hello, Sam. Thanks. Could you, uh, could you give these to Mrs. Atkinson, please? Right, old Pat. Mind how you go. Oh dear, I think we're stuck. It's all that rain, it's made the ground boggy. Hello, Pat. Still here? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm stuck in the mud. I'll give Pete Fogg a shout as I go past. He can tow you out with his tractor. Hang on. Thanks, Sam. Ah, uh, well. 
Looking at life through a farmer's eyes Always aware of the changing skies The wind and the rain, they all make their claim As he plows and he sows and sets seeds into rows He sees all the wonders that nature can bring As he works all the year to bring rich harvests in the changing skies hedgerows with birds wild animals and trees in the bright summer sun he sees busy honeybees and he's working with nature as all round the farm he'll try to make sure good things come to no harm summer and winter seasons all through There's never a time when there's nothing to do Setting the crops and preparing the land He always can do with a good helping hand Looking at life through a farmer's eyes Always aware of the changing skies He works between forests and valleys and hills Or the flat even plains with an unbroken view But wherever it is, still the farmers can claim That they work for our bread with their harvests of grain Wherever it is, the farmers can claim That they work for our bread with their harvests of grain Peter came at last. Hello, Peter. Can you tow me out, please? <laughs> My van's stuck in the mud. Easy! Sam said you'd need help. Uh, I'll just back up. then. Uh, just tie it on there. Right. All right. Ready? Bye. Thanks a lot. Pat was on his way again. Morning. Morning, Pat. You're a bit late today. Yes. I got held up down by Atkinson's. I was trying to get past Sam's van, and I got stuck on the grass verge. Then I had to wait for Peter Fogg to come and pull me out with his tractor. Oh, a good thing he did. Look, Major Forbes' bull. It won first prize at the county show. Isn't it a magnificent animal? Have you seen it? <laughs> no, and I don't think I want to either. There's a letter for the Major, so you might meet the bull. Better keep a sharp lookout. I'd run a mile if I saw it. Cheerio.
Ted Glenn was waving to Pat to make him stop. Some fools left a gate open. I bet it's those campers. The sheep have got into the clover field. It'll kill them if they eat too much. Uh, can you give me a hand to drive them back? Yes, of course I will. I used to work on a farm when I was a lad. Have they gone far, then? You can see them, up there. They've spread out a bit. We'd better get after them. Hang on, Pat. <laughs> We've left a gate open now. We're as bad as the campers. I'll shut it. Uh, you go that way, and I'll go this. Right. Was warm work. What's that funny noise? Hey up! It's that bull! Run! Ooh. Oh! Hey, wait for me! What's up, Ted? Oh, it's my ankle! Oh! I gum it does it! Ouch! I can't get up! I think I've broken it. Now what are we going to do? You can't sit here till it gets better. I'd better go and get Dr Gilbertson from the village. Won't be long. Pat gave Dr Gilbertson her letters and told her about Ted's broken ankle. Oh dear, my car's in Pencaster being serviced, said the doctor. Then I'll take you in my van. So Dr Gilbertson brought her bag. She sat in Jessie's place. Ted was glad to see the doctor. Oh! Ooh! Ouch! She soon bandaged his ankle up. It wasn't broken, just badly sprained. Try not to put too much weight on it now. Pat's walking stick came in handy. Thanks, Pat. Oh. Eat my gum. You'll have to ride amongst the letters, Ted. Easy now. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Jess rode on Dr. Gilbertson's knee until they arrived back at the surgery. Bye, Pat. Ted was glad to get home. You all right now? 
I'll manage. Thanks for helping. Cheerio. Bye. Pat was on his way again. He still had a lot of letters and parcels to deliver. Hello, Alf. Hello, Pat. Uh, thanks for getting the sheep back. It's the same thing every year. Gates left open all over the place. We'll have to have words with them campers, won't we, Dot? What a morning, Jess. Rounding up sheep, dodging bulls, fetching doctors. And now we're late with all this post. We'll have to get a move on this afternoon. What lovely weather for people on holiday, said Pat. Every summer, lots of visitors came to Greendale to walk in the hills and camp in the valley. They were talking about the visitors when Pat arrived to collect the day's post. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Fine day. Morning, Pat. Yes, and a busy one, too. Plenty of post for the visitors. The Jacksons are staying up at Burkhow Cottage. There are some letters for them, so don't forget the extra call, will you, Pat? Oh, yes, and there's a registered letter for those campers up at Southland's farm. They'll have to sign for that. I do hope you catch them in. And a parcel for Granny Dryden. I wonder what that can be. <laughs> it's a busy time with all these people on holiday, said Pat. I'll be glad when it's my holiday. <laughs> Have a good day, Pat. I will. Cheerio. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Morning, Pat. his letters all along the valley. At Burkhow Cottage, the Jacksons were away, but someone had left the gate open. And something unfortunate happened. By the time Peter Fogg found the sheep, it was too late. When Pat arrived with the letters, he saw the sheep in the garden and decided to help. He'd chased sheep before. said Peter. I don't know what Mr Jackson will say. It isn't your fault, said Pat. People should close gates properly. 
I bet they won't do that again. No. Anyway, thanks for helping. Cheerio. The next stop was at Granny Dryden's cottage. She was so pleased to see her parcel, she opened it there and then. It was her new catalogue from Manchester. It was full of pictures of things to buy. Is there anything you'd like to order? Let's have a look. Ah. He chose a digital watch with a musical alarm. That's a funny watch. It doesn't look like a watch at all to me. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. It doesn't even need winding. It'll help to keep me on time. Goodbye. Pat was on his way. He had to go up the hill to Intake Farm with a letter for George Lancaster. George didn't often get letters, so he was very pleased to see this one. Um, you'll be passing the campers, won't you? said George. Could you take them some eggs? Yes, that's all right. I've got a letter for them, so I'll have to stop there anyway. George went for the eggs. What beauties, said Pat. I must take care not to drop them, especially if they're all in one basket. Cheerio! Hello? Anyone at home? That's a nuisance. They must have gone off for a walk. Well, I can tuck the eggs under here. They'll be all right. But what about this registered letter? I can't leave that. It looks too valuable. And they'll have to sign for it. I wonder if Miss Hubbard knows where they've gone. Miss Hubbard's cottage was just across the field, so Pat walked over to see if she was at home. He was lucky. She'd just cycled back from the village. Pat told her about the special letter. She knew where the campers were, all right. They've gone off to see the Gategill waterfalls, she said. They asked me the way this morning. Oh, dear. That's at least six miles, and my van can't go along that old track. I'll borrow a tractor from the farm, said Miss Hubbard. Uh, I can't drive a tractor. Don't worry, I can. And off she went for the tractor.
Pat wasn't sure that he wanted to ride on a tractor, but there was no other way. So he climbed on and off they went. It was a very exciting ride, and a rough one in places. Hold on tight. Oh, that hurts. Oh, heck. Oh. Oh, hey up. Careful. Only two more miles to go. Oh, thank goodness for that. Pat was glad when they stopped, but when he climbed down, he was almost too stiff and sore to take the letter to the campers. And then they had to go all the way back again. Pat was glad when at last he got back to his van. But what was Jess looking at in the back? It was one of George Lancaster's hens. It had got in somehow and laid an egg. She'll have to stay there until tomorrow, said Pat. But the egg, <laughs> the egg will do nicely for my tea. Pat was on his way home when he spotted a sheep stuck in a fence. So he stopped to let it out. I think that's my last job for today, he said. And off he went. He waved as he passed the Thompsons. They were still hard at work haymaking. Goodbye, Pat. See you tomorrow. <laughs> It was another hot day in Greendale, a very hot day. Everything was drying up. It's a real scorcher today, said Pat to Jess as they drove along. Phew, I'm thirsty already. Mrs. Goggins was trying to get cool outside the post office. Morning, Pat. Isn't it hot? And we're going to be without water today. I know, said Pat. The lake's really low. They're going to turn the water off this morning. Whatever will we do? <laughs> but they can't turn off the lemonade. Here, have a drink, Pat, before you go. Ah, just what I need. Mm. My, that's good. Mm. Mm. <sighs> that's much better. Thank you. Well, I'll be off then.
Hey, don't forget Granny Dryden's parcel. It looks like something special. I won't. And thanks for the drink. Cheerio. Pat put the parcel in the van to deliver later on. He started his round with the village letters. He met Granny Dryden out shopping and told her about the water being cut off. Well, it's a pity the old pump's not working, she said. There were plenty of dry times in my young days, and do you know it never dried up, not once. I wonder, said Pat. I wonder if Ted Glenn could mend it. I must ask him. He can fix just about anything. Morning, Pat. Morning, Mrs. Pottage. Let's see, uh, I think I have something for you today. Oh, thank you. Right, Jess, that's the village done. Now for the farms. The water was already off at Greendale Farm. Peter Fogg was drawing water for the cows from the old well. Hello, Tom. <laughs> Helping out. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Warm work, this. Still got water in the old well. Let's have a look. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Now you've done it. I wonder if I can fish it out with this hook. Ah, got it. It'll be nice and cool anyway. At least I didn't drop this down the well. It's for you. Oh, thanks. Could you drop this can of water off at George Lancaster's place? There'll be no water up there. Sure, we'll be going past there, won't we, Jess? Cheerio! Hello, Pat. Isn't this drought terrible? We haven't got a drop of water left. Don't worry, if you look in the back, I've brought you a can from Peter Fogg. He said you'd be short. Thanks, Pat. That's grand. Cheerio! Pat remembered to call at Ted Glenn's workshop to ask if he could mend the old village pump. 
Hello, Ted? Anyone at home? Ah, there you are. Pat asked him about the pump. What, that old pump in the village? Well, I don't know. It's worth a try. I'll get me tools. Leave it with me. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Dee, 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 dee. Boom, 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 boom. Mrs. Thompson was enjoying a cup of tea. Pat called with a letter. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. How are you getting on? Are you out of water like everyone else? Oh, no. Our spring's still flowing. Ah, very nice, too. I wonder how Ted's getting on. There's a handyman called Ted Lem, and he's working once again. He can just about fix anything you'll ever need to mend. Maybe a tractor or a ladder or a broken frying pan. Just go down and see him and he'll help you if he can. He'll just say, leave it with me, leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. He'll just say, leave it with me, leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. All the valley knows that he's the best of handy men. They all say, if you want things mended, go and see Ted Glenn, a broken clock or a horseshoe or an engine in a van just go down and see him and he'll help you if he can he'll just say leave it with me <laughs> leave it with me i'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be he'll just say leave it with me leave it with me i'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be he'll just say leave it with me <laughs> leave it with me i'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be Granny Dryden was watching out for Pat. He brought her a can of water as well as a parcel. Um, remember what you said about the old pump? Well, Ted's mended it. It's going a treat. When she opened the parcel, she discovered it was Pat's new digital watch, which she had ordered for him from Manchester. Pat was very pleased with it. I'll always be on time now, he said. Thank you for getting it for me. Uh, I'll bring the money tomorrow. Look after yourself. Goodbye. Pat had kept a can of water for himself, too. Jess kept a sharp eye on it. <laughs> he didn't want another wetting, no matter how hot it was.
It was a windy day in Greendale. Hang on, Jess. It's a difficult job driving in this wind. Help! I can't see! Alf Thompson was nearly blown off his feet. Look out! <laughs> hmm. How are we going to get past this lot? said Pat. Oh, hello, Jess. Hello, Pat. It was Peter Fogg on the other side. Hey, this wretched wind, he said. Blowing trees down all over the place. Don't worry, Pat. I'll soon shift it. I'll nip down the forestry place and borrow their machine. No wonder it blew over. It's rotten. Peter was soon back with the log lifter and a power saw. Now then, we'll soon cut our way through. Stand back, these things don't half go. I'll just get these branches out of the way, Peter. Now then, let's see if we can move the pieces. Phew, it's warm work.
Mm, should be able to get through there, said Pat. Then went for his van. But it had gone. Oh! Where could it be? There it was, safe and sound. It was just along the road, next to Sam's mobile shop. I moved your van down the road, said Sam. I could see your new paint was going to get scratched with all these branches flying about. Thanks, said Pat. It is smart, isn't it? Royal crown and all. Cheerio, Sam. Cheerio! Thanks, Peter. Cheerio! We'll have to get a move on now, Jess. Now what? Ouch! My hat! Come here. Oh, no. I'll never catch it now. It's that cable again. I'll soon fix that. There was nobody about at the village school. Have they all been blown away? The children were out enjoying the wind. But the wind wanted to deliver the letters. in all directions. The children helped to find them. One letter was stuck in a tree. Careful! It would be an airmail letter. What a day! Hold them tightly. I think they're all air letters today. Bill Thompson took them to the headmaster. And Pat waved goodbye.
Pat was blown about the valley all morning with his letters and parcels. It was almost the end of his windy round when he saw a flying towel. It was one of Granny Dryden's. He went to help her catch her washing. Oh, Pat, she said, this wind's terrible. You are a dear. I'd never have caught it all by myself. Look, there's more over there. Now we've got my washing, what about your hat? It blew off miles away and sailed down a stream. Good gracious, said Granny Dryden. Ted Glenn said he looked a postman's hat out of the lake. I didn't see how it could be yours. Look, he popped it on the old scarecrow to dry. It looks like mine. It is mine. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Scarecrow. Time to blow home, said Pat. in Greendale. Pat had to go slowly along the winding lanes. Someone waved to him, but he couldn't make out who it was. Uh, good morning, he shouted. He was late when he reached the village post office. Good morning, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry I'm late. No need to hurry, said Mrs. Goggins. There's no sign of the letters yet. It'll be this nasty fog. Come and sit yourself down and have a nice cup of tea. Thank you. That'll be lovely after that foggy drive, said Pat. I'll just brew up. Ah, that's lovely. Pat was just getting warm and comfortable, and Mrs. Goggins was just bringing the tea and biscuits, when ping went the shop's doorbell. It's early for a customer, said Mrs. Goggins. That's a good cup of tea, said Pat. But Mrs. Goggins came in with the mailbag. It's here, she said. What, already? How did he get through so quickly? There's no fog down at Pencaster. It's only in Greendale. So he's not as late as we thought he'd be. Just as I'd picked my favourite biscuit. Oh well, no time for that now. I'd better get on my way. Hold on, Mrs Goggins. I'll give you a hand. He helped to sort the letters. Not too many today, thank goodness, with all this fog about. Goodbye. Oh, and thanks for the tea. Mind how you go. <laughs> it's as thick as ever out here.
Pat knew the Greendale roads well enough, but they looked different in the fog and his lights weren't much help. He must have taken a wrong turn somewhere, so he stopped by a signpost to find out where he was. Oh dear, it wasn't a signpost, only a crossroads sign. Now what? Pat didn't know which way to go. He walked along the lane, trying to see... I can't see a thing. Oh, I'd better not lose sight of the van. Hey, dear. Even my glasses are fogged up. Then he saw someone standing in the field. Why is he so still? It must be Ted Glenn out after rabbits. He'll know the way. I'll pop over with his letter and ask him. Pat walked up very quietly so as not to disturb the rabbits and touched Ted on the shoulder. Ted didn't move. Pat put the letter in Ted's pocket. He still didn't move. Pat gave him a nudge. Oh, it was a scarecrow. Pat did feel silly. He was glad no one saw him. <laughs> Sorry, Scarecrow. The letter isn't for you. And I don't suppose you can tell me the way in this fog. Goodbye. He was just wondering what to do when he saw some lights coming through the fog. It was Alf Thompson on his tractor. Luckily, he wasn't lost. He soon showed Pat which way to go. It was on his way again. He saw Sam's mobile shop parked at the side of the road. Hello, Sam. <coughs> this fog gets in your throat, doesn't it? Have you got any cough sweets? Uh, these'll do the trick, said Sam. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. <coughs> Cheerio. The next stop was at the church. Hello, Pat. Isn't this fog ghastly? said the Reverend Timms. Don't know how you found your way. What a day for choir practice. But I expect Miss Hubbard will come. <laughs> Nothing stops her. Thanks, Pat. Go carefully and trust in the Lord. Goodbye. Cheerio, Reverend. When Pat got back to his van, he saw that Jess had gone. Pat looked everywhere. Where could that cat be? Perhaps he'd gone looking for rabbits. Pat set out to seek Jess. He called and called. Jess! Jess, where are you? Jess! Come on, Jess! Hip push, 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 push! Jess! Jess! Push, 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 push! Jess! Come on, Jess! 
Come on, Jess, this is no time for hide and seek. Oh. Push, 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 push. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Ooh. Where have you been, Jess? This is no time to wander off. Come on. Pat was lost again. Now you've done it, Jess. We're really lost this time. Let's try this way. He couldn't even find the road, let alone his van. Miss Hubbard passed the van on the way to the church. No Pat, and no Jess. What could have happened to them? <whistles> Hello, Vicar. Have you seen Pat? His van's in the road, but there's no sign of him or his cat. Oh dear. Pat called quite some time ago. They must be lost in the fog. I know what we must do, said Miss Hubbard. We must ring the bells to guide them back to the church. Come along, Reverend. Paul. I wonder why the church bells are ringing. They don't usually ring for choir practice. Still, they're as good as a foghorn. We'll soon find the way now. There's Pat now. Hello, Reverend. Hello, Miss Hubbard. <laughs> it's a good thing you rang those bells. The Lord is our guide, said the Reverend. Come and have some tea. There's plenty in the pot. Thanks, just what I need, said Pat. There was some milk for Jess. Look, said Miss Hubbard. It's much lighter outside. The sun was shining and a breeze had blown the fog away. Ah, that's much better, said Pat. Now I can get on with my letters. Come on, Jess. Cheerio. Farewell. Bye, Pat. It was lovely driving along in the sunshine <laughs> without getting lost. Look, Jess, <laughs> that scarecrow's still waiting for a letter. Hubbard, who was always up bright and early, was surprised to see Pat's van still outside his house. Goodness me, Pat should be away by now. I wonder what's wrong. 
Pat, are you there? Pat! Pat! Goeep! You! Pat, it's late! Ah, oh, there you are! Still in bed, Pat. What about the post? Oh dear, is it that late? I must have overslept. Wretched alarm clock. Morning, Pat. Must go or I'll be late as well. Pat rushed out without any breakfast. I'd better get my skates on. They'll all wonder where I've got to. Oh no, my hat. Come on, Jess. Don't just sit there. Oh! What are you playing at, Jess? Do you think you're Postman Jess or something? Come on, let's get moving. What a start to the day. That alarm clock couldn't have gone off. We're over an hour late already. It was past nine o'clock at the post office. I wonder why Pat is so late, said Mrs. Goggins. Anyway, it gives me time to repair this parcel. Is that him? Oh! It's not my day today, is it? Good morning, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry I'm late. It's that alarm clock. Didn't go off, you know. As bad as this parcel. Just look at it. I do wish people would wrap them up properly. This is a right old mess. Can I help? Oh, my hat. This stuff sticks to everything. Gosh, it's all over my fingers. Ooh, yuck. That's really sticky. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh. Oh, dear. You're as bad as me today. All thumbs. There you are. I think it will hold. It's just one of those days, said Pat. Thank you. Wish me luck. I need it today. There's Ted. That messy parcel is for him. We'll give it to him before it falls to bits. Hi, Ted. Got a parcel for you. Ted! Oh, hello, Pat. Is that my parcel? It'll be those spare parts I ordered. Whoops! Oh, no! Dozens of nuts and bolts, cogs and screws rolled away into the grass. Oh, dear. I'll never find them all. Not in this long grass. Hold on. I'll give you a hand. That's one bit. But what about all the others? Bill Thompson had just set out from home on his way to the village when he saw Pat and Ted searching for something in the grass. Have you lost something? He said. Yes, a lot of nuts and bolts. I've got just the thing for that at home. I'll go and get it. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> we'll still be here, said Ted. What's he on about? said Pat. <laughs> Search me. Is this one of them? 
Mm, no, looks like a rusty nail. <laughs> like this. Rubbish. We're getting nowhere. I know. Look, the lad's back already. And he's got a magnet with him. <laughs> Hope it's a good one or it won't be much use. Have you found much? said Bill. Well, no, not yet. This is really powerful. Picks up anything metal. You have a try. Oh, thanks. It started to pick up all the metal bits from the grass, as well as Pat's glasses. Over here, said Ted. I hope they're all there, said Pat. I'll count them, said Ted. Thanks, Pat. Cheerio. Dunno, Pat. Thanks for your help. Here's another bit. Thanks, Bill. What a day, said Pat to Jess. We'll never get through at this rate. His next stop was Thompson Ground. Alf was busy mending the barn wall. Morning, Alf. Sorry I'm late. Got some letters for you. Just leave them on the table. Dorothy's away feeding the chickens. Nothing urgent, is there? No, just a few bills. Oops! Hey, up, what are you doing? Sorry, Alf. Hang on. Hold it steady! Not that way, the other way. I said the other way! Oh! Ouch! Oh, my hand. Oh, it does hurt. Ah! Oh, gosh, that's painful. You all right, Pat? Oh, dear. Well, don't move. I'll go and get something for it. Just then, Mrs. Thompson came back from feeding the chickens. Dear me, whatever have you been up to, Pat? Not looking where I was going, I'm afraid. Walking into ladders. You mustn't make it a habit. Now hold still, and I'll bind it up for you. But you won't be able to drive today, you know. You'll have to rest it. Thanks, but what about all my letters? said Pat. Just then, Sam Waldron drove his mobile shop into the farmyard. He noticed Pat's bandaged hand. Hello, what happened to you? They told him about Pat's accident and that he was unable to drive. Why don't we put your letters and parcels in my van, said Sam. We can do our rounds together. Yes, and then the post will get through after all, said Pat. Thanks, Sam, that's a marvellous idea. Come on, Jess, you'll be all right in there. Thanks, Alf. That's the lot now. Bye. We'd better get Dr. Gilbertson to take a look at that wrist, said Sam. It was their first stop anyway. Won't be long. Hello, Pat. Goodness me, what have you been doing? It's my wrist. 
Come on in. Let's have a look at it. Ouch! Is this where it hurts? Ouch! Ah, well, it's not broken. You'll be all right in a day or two. I'll just give you something to soothe it. You'll soon be able to drive. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Cheerio. Bye. No need to worry. Nothing broken. For twice a week there comes a mobile shop up to the valley. And folks are delighted when he comes around For it always will save a long journey to town From the valley, the valley He's always on time as he rings out his chime In the valley, valley. Mothers can plan with a great shopping list if he cut out his service, oh, he'd be terribly missed In the valley, the valley What the people will want in the valley. valley He buys in the town Then he takes things around All his customers know that he won't let them down In the valley, the valley Thanks for the lift, Sam. It's been a funny old day, but tomorrow, well, tomorrow's another day. That's the stuff, Bat. There was deep snow in Greendale. Peter Fogg was busy clearing the roads. Nobody could get about until he had shifted the snow. Postman Pat, and Sam Waldron, <laughs> and Miss Hubbard followed in Peter's tracks. The Reverend Timms was clearing his path. He waved to Pat as he slowly went by. Keep my seat warm, Jess. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Isn't this snow awful? It's a good thing Peter Fogg's clearing some of the roads. We'd never have got through without him. They do say there's ten-foot drifts up at Intake Farm, Pat. And here's an urgent parcel for George, up at Hill Top. You'll never get there today, you know. Oh, dear. But I'd better take it just in case. I, I usually manage somehow. Well, mind how you go, Pat. We don't want you getting buried in the snow. Oh, I'll be all right. Cheerio. We can always dig ourselves out, can't we, Jess, if we get stuck? Pat was on his way. 
He had to drive carefully along the slippery roads. At Greendale Farm, the twins were waiting for him. Oh! Who threw that? You little monkeys. Two can play at that game. Hey! What's going on? Oh, dear. Sorry, Mr. Thompson. I didn't know you were here. I, I was aiming at the twins. That's all right, Pat. It's only a bit of fun. You're just in time, cos the road's blocked and the snowplow's stuck in a big drift. We've come to dig it out. You could give us a hand. OK. I can't get on with my round anyway till the road's clear. I'll just give Mrs. Pottage her letters first. The snow's bad this year, Mrs. Pottage. Well... <laughs> The twins are enjoying it. <laughs> yes, so I've discovered. Bye, Pat. Peter Fogg was already digging when they got to the snowplough. Here we are, Ted. This is the spot. Whoops. Don't worry, Peter, we'll have you out in no time. Thank goodness for that. Phew, it's warm work, I can tell you. Come on, lads, put your backs into it. Hang on. I'll see if I can get through now. He took a run at the snowdrift. Come on, Pete, you can do it. He was through. The twins had been busy. Bye. Bye, Pat. Bye. stopped at the vicarage with a letter for the Reverend Timms. But Dr Gilbertson came to the door instead. Come in, Pat. The poor Reverend slipped on the ice and broken his leg. Oh, dear. That is bad news. Hello, Pat. Just look at this. Isn't it stupid? A piece of bad luck, I'd say, Reverend. But I've brought a letter to cheer you up. Ah, oh, yes, from Cousin Sylvia. That'll make good reading. Oh, but what about the parish magazine? I was going to take it round today. I can take it with my letters, said Pat. No trouble at all. I'll see they get through. Cheerio, Reverend.
Thompson ground, Dorothy Thompson was out collecting the eggs. I hope you haven't any letters for Hilltop, she said. The snow's so bad that Peter had to turn back. The plough just couldn't get up the hill. Hmm. I've got a parcel for George marked urgent. What can I do? Perhaps I could walk it. I've got a better idea. We can use the old farm sledge. I've got to take some food up for the sheep. Well, it's a long time since I was on a sledge. But it looks like the only way of getting the parcel there. Here we are, said Alf. You'd better take George some groceries, said Dorothy. He might be running short, being snowed up like this. They loaded up the sledge. Off they went. It was hard going uphill, <laughs> but lovely downhill. The sheep were glad to see them. Just look at that drift. George's house was nearly buried. George was out. He'd gone to feed his sheep. So Pat left the food and the parcel on the table. We'll have a fast ride downhill, said Alf. Give us a push. Hold on. Here we go. Hold on, Pat. Help. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, dear. You all right, Pat? All in one piece, I think. Hold tight. Hey! Mind that tree. Whoa! Ho, 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 ho! Hey! My goodness, <laughs> that's one way of delivering a parcel. We'll need a hot drink after that, said Alf. Here we are, all ready for you. Jess was glad he'd stayed by the warm fire. Thanks, Mrs. Thompson. Just what I need. Aye, there's no like a good cup of tea. Thanks for the ride. Goodbye. The rest of Pat's round was in the valley and the roads had been cleared and gritted by now. 
No more digging or sledging today, said Pat. It takes more than snow to stop us, Jess. Postman Pat was out on his rounds as usual, but he had to go very carefully. Sam Waldron was out too, with his mobile shop. Hello, Pat. Rough weather. Hello, Sam. How's it going? Well, I don't think I'll be able to get this van up to Granny Dryden's with the groceries. I'll take them with the letters, said Pat. Right-o. Here they are. That'll keep her going for a while. Thanks, Pat. Mind how you go. Cheerio. And Pat was on his way. He skidded and slithered along the steep road to Granny Dryden's house. She was glad to see him, especially when she saw he had a groceries as well as a letter. Good morning! Oh, thank you, Pat. That's lovely. And that letter will be from that lass of mine down in London. I can't find me reading glasses anywhere. Would you tell me what she says, Pat? Certainly. Now, let's see. She says, Dear Mum, just a line to let you know... Speak up, please, Pat. I can't hear you. We'll all be able to come up to Greendale to see you for your birthday. Jim started school this week and Dad's bought a new car. All well, and hoping you are too. All our love, Sally and family. Eee, that's good news. Thanks, Pat. Have a cup of tea. Thank you, Mrs Dryden. Oh. Ah. Just the thing, this cold weather. I'll be on my way before it starts snowing again. Goodbye. Bye, Pat. Pat's next stop was at Ted Glenn's workshop. Morning, Ted. Hello, Pat. Bye. Brr. It's cold outside. That's a grand stove you've got there. I could do with that in my van. Ooh, it's lovely. Here's somebody writing from a warm place. Australia. Yeah, it'll be Albert. It's ages since he's written. That reminds me. I found Bert's old skates this morning. I reckon they'll be just about your size, Pat. Do you fancy trying them out? They say the tarn's frozen hard. Well, I don't know. I'd love to have a go. Is the ice safe? 
Has anyone checked it? <laughs> yes, Miss Hubbard. Take them anyway. You never know when they might come in handy. And I've got some of my own. Thanks, Ted. Cheerio. blowing the snow into deeper and deeper drifts. Soon, Pat had to stop. The road was blocked. He thought he would never get through with his letters now. Then he looked across to the tarn and saw someone skating on the ice. It's worth trying, Jess. I can take a short cut across the ice. Come on, Pat, it's lovely! You stay here, Jess, and mind the van. I'll just put these skates on. Here we go. Whoa! Lee dee dee dum, yada dee 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 do. Hello, Pat. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> Special ice delivery today. Thank you. Good skating. George Lancaster was still on the ice. He did get a surprise when Pat whizzed by with a letter. Mrs. Thompson was out for a spin too. Ouch! Hello, Pat. What are you doing down there? Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Look at Jess. Come on, Jess. That's enough skating for today. We'll get back on wheels. There were no children at the school. They were all snowed up at home. But the snowman was there. Pat had an envelope in his pocket, so he addressed it to the snowman. Mr. Snowman, the Drift, Greendale School, and tucked it under his arm. Hello, who's that? It was Miss Hubbard and Ted. Hello, Pat. Have you seen my bicycle? The snow must have buried it. We'll have to find it. You dig there, Ted. And you try here, Pat. Where 
can it be? Who left this gate open? On with the search. Tut, tut, tut. Found something? Hm, just an old kettle. I think it's here. Just in time for choir practice. I'll be off now. I'll open the gate for you, Miss Hubbard. Thank you, Pat. Goodbye. Bye, Miss Hubbard. Nothing stops her, does it? See you in church on Sunday. I'm coming, Jess. Time to go home. Cheer up, Jess. This snow can't last forever. It had been wild and windy in Greendale. A lot of branches had fallen from the trees. Some had broken the telephone wires. Dear me, said Pat. That's a nuisance. There'll be a fair number of telephones out of action now. Oh, I wonder if the Reverend Tim's kept that stamp for me. Better pop in and see him. I hope he remembered. Hello, Reverend. I just popped in to see if you kept that Australian stamp yesterday. Of course, Pat. Just the thing for your collection. Waste not, want not. Thanks. But where are you off to, Reverend? London, to meet my sister Elsie. She's flying over from Australia. Haven't seen her for years. Here's that stamp. Thanks. Such a nuisance. I'll have to visit everyone to cancel church meetings while I'm away. Such a bother with a train to catch, too. If only the phone was working. It's this wind we've been having. It's brought the wires down. Well, I'll just have to hurry. The train goes in an hour. Hope you get round in time, Reverend. Cheerio. Have a good trip. called at the post office for the letters. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. I'm not late, am I? Not really, but I thought you might have trouble getting through, what with all these trees blown down. Pat told Mrs. Goggins all about the Reverend Tim's letter, his trip to London, and his telephone being out of action. E, it's a bad job, isn't it? 
My phone's working anyway, said Mrs. Goggins. Hello, Greendale Post Office here. Who is it? Elsie Timms. Urgent message for the Reverend Timms. Flight diverted to Manchester. You'll come on to Greendale by car. Yes, I'll ask our postman to dash over and tell the Reverend not to go to London after all. I've got the message. Tell her I'm on my way. Bye, Pat. I hope you're in time. Bye. Hold tight, Jess. You're going to see some pretty hot driving now. Look out, Ted! Looks as though the Reverend's gone. I'll leave a note in case he calls back before he goes to the station. I might even catch up with him at Miss Hubbard's. Now, Jess, we can take a shortcut along the back roads. It was a bit rough. Oh, no! Now, who's left that there? We'll never get past it. There's only one thing for it now. Come on, Jess. We'll have to walk it. Hello, Pat. What's all the hurry? Morning, Miss Hubbard. I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Have you seen him? Oh, he went a few moments ago. He's in a hurry, too. He wants to catch the London train. Oh, no. He mustn't go to London. I've got an urgent message for him. He did say he had to call at Ted Glenn's first. You might catch him there. You can borrow my bicycle. Go on. Thanks, Miss Hubbard. I'll try anything once. Come on, Jess. Hold tight. Oh, dear. I couldn't do this every day. Ooh. Oh, dear. Oh, I'll be glad when this is over. Oh. oh, this is hard work. Oh! Hello, Pat. <laughs> Whatever are you doing? You all right? I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Oh, you're too late. The Reverend's gone. Uh, but he said he'd call on Granny Dryden before he catches his train. 
Oh, no. Just look at that front wheel. It looks very peculiar. Leave it to me. I'll fettle it. You can borrow these roller skates. I've just mended them. You'll fairly move when you've got these on. Well, I said I'd try anything, and I must catch the Reverend before he catches his train. Thanks, Ted. Here we go again. Oh, oops! You're doing fine, Pat. It's not so good uphill. How do you stop? Whoa! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Meanwhile, Sam was taking the Reverend to the train. I thought I saw Pat dive over that gate, said Sam. Hello, Sam. Ah, Reverend. Thank goodness you haven't gone to London. Pat told the Reverend all about his sister's phone message, saying she was coming straight to Greendale. Lord bless us, what a good thing you caught me in time. There's no need to go to London now. Thank you, Pat. Here comes Peter Fogg, said Sam. We'd better get out of the way. Goodbye. Peter was following Sam's van along the road. Hello, Pat. Sorry I blocked the road with me trailer. I'll give you a ride back to your van. Thanks, Pete. I couldn't walk it. Here's the little story of a very special cat who's the friend and good companion of a certain postman. Pat. Traveling through the country with his good friend by his side, Pat knows his cat just likes to be there, for he always likes to ride through the beautiful valley and its lovely countryside. As he sits up by the window and the views go gliding by. Jess is his cat, Jess is his cat, Jess is his cat, and it's always been like that, and it's always been like that, always been like that, always been like that, ever since that he was given as a tiny little kitten, ever since that he was given as a tiny Chat, for they always like to see Pat as he goes by with his cat through the beautiful valley and its lovely countryside as he sits up by the window and the views go gliding by. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. And it's always been like that. And it's always been like that. All right, but... Yes, thanks, Pete. Cheerio. Now, where did I put my pen? I must have left it at the vicarage. The Reverend Timms was carrying his sister's luggage into the house. I made it. Thanks to you, Pat. I got back just before my sister arrived. Oh, and I found your pen on my doorstep. Thanks, Reverend. I hope your sister enjoys a visit. Bye, Pat. Goodbye, Jess. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, 
Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 boom,